Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's get to talking, but before we do, thank you, thank you, thank you. What you've done for our channel and helping us grow is so greatly appreciated. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, we broke 5,000 subs, I think, on Friday or something like that. Thursday or Friday, and now we're about to break 5,500, probably by tomorrow. <clears throat> we're getting real close, so thank you. Let's just jump right on in on the topic of the day or of the moment. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of a lot has been going on in reference to this Asia Wilson comment to Kelsey Plum while I guess she they were watching Paige Becker's play. I think that was at probably at the final four is what it looks like. <clears throat> but a lot was a lot has been said by many people about Asia Wilson's comments. So I'm going to give my opinion on it, my two cents on it. But I'm going to rewind it a little bit so you see where it comes from. But at the same time, just show you how utterly ridiculous Asia Wilson's comments are. So let me show you what Asia Wilson said. If you haven't seen it already, I'm going to show it to you. Take a look. So Kelsey Plum ha has to be as tone deaf as exists in this world. But Kelsey Plum's also in a, in a pickle of a situation because she plays in a league that is filled with a bunch of women who think their job is to be an activist and not to be a basketball player. They think that everything I, – I, I mean, I'm 46 years old, and I, I've never heard the word privilege – white privilege primarily or, or privilege of any kind. I've never heard that word tossed around the way I hear it tossed around over the last probably five years. You never, I never heard white privilege when I was 22. I never heard college students or people in their twenties use the term white privilege. And to give you a little bit more background on myself, which you should know by now, my wife is, my wife is black. My children are black. I'm in a predominantly black fraternity. Call Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, founded on Howard University, January 9th, 1914. Most of my friends are black. And I know it's people that say, well, uh, you know, the commentary about oh, you, 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 people, when they say you're racist or stuff like that, people make comments like that. And like, and the people, folks reply with, well, I have, I have a black friend. I'm like, no, my family is black. Not my my family, my brothers are black. I pledge an organization that's 99% black. My children are black. My wife is black. My ex-wife is black. I, I mean, I, I don't know what, <clears throat> what you need. So this isn't about, oh, my friends are black. No. Yeah, most of my, my friends are black. Most of them are black. So... I've never heard that type of commentary or that conversation in my 20s amongst my black friends. I never heard it. I didn't start hearing this type of shit until the last five or six years, maybe. And maybe I'm maybe I'm tone deaf. Maybe I was in the clouds. I don't I, I wasn't, but maybe I was. I'm gonna put it, it's a possibility. But you never heard a 28-year-old like Asia Wilson who went to a private school for the duration of her existence. A school that costs over $20,000 a year. Sit here and talk about privilege. I'm sorry, the daughter of a professional basketball player, the sister of a professional basketball player, the daughter of a court reporter. Court reporters, if you don't know, make money. That's a great, that's a great skill to have. 
court reporters will never go out of out of business. If you market yourself properly, you can make a boatload of bread as a court reporter. <clears throat> but Asia Wilson went to a private school. If you remember the movie Eight Mile, his real name is Clarence. Just a little reminder. Three, one, three. Put your motherfucking hands up. Look, look. Now while he stands tough, notice that this man did not have his hands up. The free world's got you cast up. Now who's afraid of the big bad dwarf? One, two, three, and to the four. One pop, two pop, three pop, four. Four pop, three pop, two pop, one. Your pop, he's pop, your pop, none. This guy ain't no motherfucking MC. I know everything he's got to say against me. I am white. I am a fucking punk. I do live in a trailer with my mom. My boy future is enough. I do got a dumb friend named Cheddar Pie Your father is Himself in his leg with his own gun I did get jumped by all six of you chumps And we did fuck my girl I'm still standing here screaming fuck the free world Well never try to judge me dude You don't know what the fuck I've been through But I know something about, about you, about you. you With the cram bro That's a private school What's the matter dog? You, you, you live in Paris? Paris? And the real his real name is Clarence Parents have a real good marriage. no such thing as a halfway crooks. You like that? Did you like that? I'm going Kirk Cousins. Did you like that? That was fun. That was fun. Asia Wilson is Clarence. Asia Wilson walks around like she's some liberator, some activist. Sweetheart, we know where you're from. You look silly when you talk about privilege, when you are a blessed woman, blessed with privilege from your own family. I will never, ever be able to speak about the Black experience and walking around in the shoes of a Black man. Never. I do the best I can to help educate my sons on the things that they should and should not do as they get older and with the people that they come into, come into contact with to prevent things from potentially happening to them. But Asia Wilson walking around here and telling Kelsey Plum what she told her and how, oh, 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 and ba basketball too. No, Kelsey Plum is five foot eight. She has busted her ass. You think she's in the WNBA because of white privilege? And, and, and understanding your privilege? Man, Asia, shut the F up. You're a joke. You are a privileged young woman who's six foot four the child of a pro basketball player, the sibling of a pro basketball player, whether it's in Europe or in the, in, in the NBA, I do not care. You went to school for free. You went to high school. You went to, you went to 12 years from what I've read. From what I've read, maybe I'm wrong. But from what I've read, she went to enough years of private school where probably paid for by her parents but maybe it wasn't i don't know but i know what it says is that there were very few black students there so you were one of few who got the opportunity to go to a high level private school in that area good for you you're privileged and you're gonna sit here and tell kelsey Plum, who is clearly not hip to the game that You've just been insulted, Kelsey, by your own teammate, lectured like you're some toddler child by the by your mom. I've never had heard Kelsey Plum go on some conversational tour about the black experience and the privilege that she has. Get, get out of here. What, when, when did she do that? When did she do that? Kelsey Plum is a ball player. The WNBA is a basketball league. It is not the job of professional basketball players 
to be activists. And I'm going to repeat it over and over and over again. I watch every sport there is. No one is required to be an activist because they're being bullied by a mass major vast majority of the league. These women in the WNBA are definitions are the definitions of bullies. They're bullies. And Asia Wilson played a bully card right there. Paige Beckers, Paige Beckers knows her privilege. Paige Beckers also has a black step parent. She has a black step parent. So she might be a slightly more in that life. But even then, even then, Paige Beckers is not where she is because of privilege. She's where she is because she's a freaking baller. She's a great basketball player. And the fact that you would put privilege and talk about that ahead of her basketball skills is disgusting. Beyond that, I will tell you this. In the world of basketball, being white is not a privilege. There is no privilege in being a white basketball player you're assumed to be slow-footed you're assumed to not be able to play defense you're assumed to not be able to jump you're assumed to not be tough these are all assumptions you're assumed that you cannot play which is why someone like caitlin clark so greatly intimidates these individuals these women in the wmba they bother her she bothers them so because of all the things that she's able to do that they cannot do that's the reality. Sure, Caitlin Clark defensively stinks. Stinks. Defensively, she stinks. She got to get a lot better playing defense. But everything else, and there's plenty of other, there's plenty of black players that stink defensively too. Melissa Smith is probably worse defensively than Caitlin Clark. And she's supposed to be a much more athletic person than Caitlin Clark. Presumably. Maybe she's not. The presumptions that are made about, about, about white athletes, primarily in basketball and football, are all negative. There's nothing presumed positive about a basketball, a white basketball, or a white football player. Nothing. There's nothing positive from it. It's always presumed that they can't play. You ever hear any black running backs complain that Christian McCaffrey McCafferty is considered the best running back in the NFL? No, because they know he's that dude. Is he the is, is the reason he's that dude because of white privilege? No, because that dude, I, I take that back. Yes, maybe there's a privilege, but it's not because of white privilege, it's because of privilege of his father being a former professional football player. So, yes, he got the opportunities because his father was a professional football player. Does LeBron does Bronny James? Have white privilege? No, he's got privilege. He's privileged enough to be the son of LeBron and got in the NBA, even though he didn't deserve it because he hadn't earned it. Whereas Christian McCaffrey played three years of college football and was the best running back and was, was like the, one of the best players in college football. Privilege is privilege. Whether you want to attach it to race, you want to attach it to financial means, there are plenty of juniors that are now playing professional basketball in the NBA. Jalen Brunson, for example, is 10 times the player his father was. Why? Because his father put in hours into him. His father provided him opportunities that his father probably didn't have. LeBron James' sons are both at some point going to play in the NBA. Well, Bronny's already here. He got drafted because his dad's LeBron. Let's be real. We know why he was drafted. It wasn't because he's that damn good. Bryce is probably a better player, and he will be in the NBA at some point. Carmelo Anthony's son will be in the NBA at some point. Gilbert Arenas' son will be in the NBA at some point. There are plenty, plenty now of basketball players who are going to be in the NBA because of the privilege they received in training, in blessing of height, a lot of times because these guys are tall as hell, and an opportunity to go to the best schools there is. Good for them. They just, they, great. Congratulations. But you don't sit here, even, even when LeBron's trying to play the role of activist, you never hear him speak like this, this, this freaking clown. Asia Wilson, you never, 
ever hear this type of garbage come out of his mouth. Let alone insulting a teammate like that. I've never heard an, a, a black basket NBA player talk talk to a white NBA player and say, "Well, you know, that guy, that guy is good over there because you know he 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 understands that he's got the white privilege. You know, he he gets it, and that's what puts him over the top of being a good basketball player." Get the freaking hell out of here! Get out of here! You never hear that, but you hear this. Now I don't know how this audio came to be found. Well, there's clearly hot mics there. Don't know how it came out. Don't know why. Don't know. I don't care. But I know it was said, and I and and it's <clears throat> and it and it goes back to this stuff with 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 Paige Beckers. Paige Beckers, and here's okay. Let's let's jump back real sec, real quick. This is what Asia Wilson said about Caitlin Clark. Wilson brought up race a couple of weeks ago when discussing Caitlin Clark's newfound fame, suggesting that because she was white, she was getting more attention than a black female player would. I think it's the quote. I think it's a huge thing. I think a lot of people may say it's not about black and white, but to me, it is. It really is because you can be top notch at what you are as a black woman, but yet maybe there's something that's something that people don't want to see. They don't see it as marketable. So it doesn't matter how hard I work. It doesn't matter what we all do as black women. We're still going to be swept underneath the rug. That's why it boils my blood when people say it's not about race because it is. These are Caitlin Clark's stats at Iowa last year. 31.6 points per game, 7.4 rebounds, 8.9 assists, 45.5% from the field, 37.8% eighty from three, 86% from the line. And she led them to the national championship game for the second straight year. Career numbers, 28.4 points, 7.1 rebounds, 8.2 assists, 46.2 from the field, 37.7 from three, 85.8% from the line. These are her college career numbers. Two-time AP Player of the Year, four-time AP All-American, Two-time Naismith Award winner. Two-time Wooden Award winner. Two-time Big Ten Tourney MVP. Three-time Big Ten Player of the Year. Four-time All-Big Ten. Four-time All-WBCA All-American. Two-time All-Big Tournament. I, I mean, 2021 Big Ten Rookie of the Year. Big Ten All-Freshman. This one was going to have her jersey raised in Iowa. This one was going to have a statue built in front of their arena. This woman's college career makes everyone else's look small. I don't care how many national championships Brianna Stewart won. She played on a loaded squad with 10 to 12 McDonald's All-Americans as teammates. Caitlin Clark didn't play with one. The 12th player on the UConn roster probably was ranked higher than her highest ranked college teammate coming out of high school. Asia Wilson played with 10 McDonald's All-Americans, more than likely, or, or definitely more than zero. Her 12th player probably was ranked ahead of the second best player at Iowa the last two years coming out of high school. The 12th, definitely the top five, maybe the 10th. She played with players that are not even in the WNBA today. 
including one of our starting guards, Gabby Marshall, who's not in anyone's league. <clears throat> Sabrina Ionescu was supposed to be Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark. Sabrina Ionescu won a handful of awards, three-time All AP All-American, three-time WBC All-American, two-time Wooden Award, one-time Naismith, three-time All-Region, 20, 20, 20, AP Player of the Year, 2019-2020, three-time Pac-12 Player of the Year, four-time All-Pac-12, Pac-12 Freshman, Rookie of the Year. These are her numbers, 18, 7.3, 7.7, 7.5, 42.2, 85.1. She had a great college career. It wasn't Caitlin Clark. She averaged 10 points less per game than Caitlin Clark. And she never went to the national championship game. I don't even know, I don't even know if she made the final four. I don't remember if they made the final four or not. Let's take a look. Did they make the final four? Tournament, tournament, nope, not there. That's her senior year. Okay, they made the final four her junior year. And they lost. And they lost. But this was supposed to be Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark. And that's the thing. They lost to the Elite Eight the year before that. All right, so she made the Final Four one time. <clears throat> Kaylin Clark went to the National Championship twice. Kaylin Clark carried people. But Sabrina Ionescu, when she came in, was supposedly going to have that same type of level of following, and what does that amount to? Absolutely nothing. This is a skill privilege. And this is what's so bothersome about the crap that comes out of Asia Wilson's mouth. This is a skill privilege. You're blessed with height privilege, which makes you a better basketball player in the women's game than most women because you're taller. Because your skill is okay. I would venture to guess that Kelsey Plum is probably far more skilled than you, but she's 5'8". Her individual college accolades probably exceed yours. I'm not talking about team wins and stuff like that because you have teammates. You can't win a national championship without teammates. But you can put up ridiculous numbers, and Kelsey Plum put up ridiculous numbers in college. And she was supposed to be Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark. And she averaged as a, as a rookie, I think, eight points in the WNBA. Kaylin Clark averaged 19 and a half, 19 plus. What are we talking about here? Privilege. There's a lot of things that you can talk about for privilege when it comes to white privilege. Basketball is not one of them. Basketball will never be a white privilege because, in fact, being white is a negative in basketball. And even in football, unless you're a 330 pound offensive lineman or a six foot five, 260 pound tight end. Because for the most part, the NFL is filled with a bunch of black men who are hella athletic, hella skilled, and far better than the, their white contemporaries. Just what it is. There's only a few positions that you see white dudes playing. Cornerback, you never see. If you see a white corner, you're like, what? Wide receiver? Very rare. <clears throat> receiver over the last 40 years. Name me a good white wide receiver. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. You know who else? Ed McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey's dad. For the most part, there's no good white, white no elite level or top shelf white wide receiver. Running back? Christian McCaffrey. After that, who? Nobody. Nobody. Safeties? Don't see really many. Heck, you don't see very many white linebackers anymore. The NFL, professional football is, is 
I don't know what the percentages are, but I'm going to guess it's got to be 75% black. So again, when we're talking about something, when you want to go on this freaking thing about white, about privilege and understanding her privilege, I'm going to bring it back now. I know we're 25 minutes into this video and I hope people stuck around because I'm going to bring it back to where this all stems from and how Paige Beckers understands her privilege. And I want you to hear where it all comes from. It comes from her speech at the ESPYs. An event, I believe she won player of the year, I'm presuming. I, I, I don't know specifically. I don't know what award she got. Um, she received the Comeback Athlete Award because she's been hurt so much in college. But she got the Comeback Athlete Award. Now, let me show you what she said and why this is she understands her privilege. better than I could have ever imagined. Um, I'm just a small town kid with really big dreams and I'm honored to show all the little kids that are watching this that dreams do come true if you work hard and you have great faith in your life. Um, a huge shout out to my friends and my family and everybody that helped me. Get let's stop. Let's stop real quick. This is supposed to be about her. She won this award. She won this award because she worked her tail off to come back from a bad injury. That's why she won this award. She's a great basketball player. She won this award because she's a great basketball player and nothing to do with anything other than being a great basketball player. To be where I am today, um, especially my coaches and my teammates. Um, I stand on just on this stage alone, but without them, I wouldn't have this award. Um, and they've sacrificed so much for me. Okay, sorry. I just had ankle surgery. I'm out of breath, okay. out of shape. But no, um, with the light that I have now, um, as a white woman who leads a black-led sport um, and celebrated here, I want to show a light on black women. Um, they don't get the media coverage that they... Why? Why? I, I want to know why you need, felt the need that your speech about you winning an award had to turn into shedding a light. But I'm going to let you finish it because I'm going to give my commentary on this because what, what she's going to say is just factually not true. Deserve. And it's a so and it's a pandering speech. Society as a whole and their value is un undeniable. Um, and in the WNBA last season, the postseason awards, 80% of the winners were black, but they got half the amount of coverage as the white athletes. So I think it's time for change. Um, sports media holds the key to storylines. Spor sports media and sponsors tell us who is valuable. And you have told the world that I matter today. And everyone who voted, thank you. Um, but I think we should use this power together to also celebrate black women. So to Maria Taylor, Robin Roberts, Maya Moore, Odyssey Alexander, to all the incredible black women in my life, on my teams, to Breonna Taylor and all the lives lost, and to those names who have not yet learned, but I hope to share, I stand behind you and I will continue to follow, follow you and follow your lead and fight for you guys. So I just want to say thank you for everything. Look, that's cute. That's a cute speech. She wrote it down. It's scripted. She's reading it off a teleprompter. She obviously knew she was going to win the award. But what are we? What are we talking about? Understand, I tremendously value black women. My wife is black. I promise you, I value black women more than Paige Beckers does. Promise you that. I, I guarantee it, in fact. I value black women a million times more than Paige Beckers does. I would give my life for my wife. I would give my life for my kids. Would she stand in front of a bullet for a black woman? I doubt it. I would. I would give my life for my wife. And you can say, well, it's your wife. Well, well, my wife's a black woman. And when I hear that speech, I listen to a pandering bunch of complete and utter garbage. Rubbish. Because she made a comment about the awards. Sha'Carri Richardson is one of the most marketed professional athletes in the world right now.
Serena Williams was one of the most marketed professional athletes in the world for 20 years. What she's talking about are WNBA players that nobody watches play. Brianna Stewart won the MVP award last year. I didn't know. Most people didn't care. Aaliyah Boston was the rookie of the year. Who was the defensive player of the year last year? I believe it was Asia Wilson. It was Asia Wilson. Who was the WNBA all all WNBA first team last year? Mind you, to this day, we still don't know who the rookie of the year is. The rookie, the, 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 okay, so the first team, all NBA, uh, first team, all NBA, WNBA last year was Nafisa Collier, Satu Sabali, Brianna Stewart, Alyssa Thomas, Asia Wilson. Four of the five women are black. Second team, Chelsea Gray, Sabrina Inescu, Jewel Lloyd, Neka Agumake, Jackie Young. Four of the five women there are black. I don't remember hearing anything celebrated about Brianna Stewart. I don't remember anything being celebrated about Sabrina Ionescu being second team all WNBA. Not a word. Not a word. Who else won awards last year? Brianna Stewart was that. Da, 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 da. Who else here? <clears throat> oh, most improved 2023 WNBA. That was Satu Sabali, another black woman. So we got one white woman who won an award and three black women who won major awards in the WNBA. Quite frankly, I don't know what the hell she's talking about because no one knew who any of these women were in this country for the most part last year. For the most part. Again, I'm going to be specific. For the most part. Most Americans did not have any idea who these women were. So what media coverage was being given to Brianna Stewart when she won WNBA MVP? Was that on first take? No. She says media makes people matter. No, it's your skills and product that make players in your league matter. The media didn't just one day decide, okay, yeah, we're going to push this NFL thing. Because we like watching big men smash into each other and get one yard. For those of you who don't know know football, football used to be three yards and a cloud of dust. That's what it used to be referred to as. And then in the late in the seventies, early eighties, the throwing throwing the ball really became a thing. Football today is you can't even recognize what football is today in comparison to what it was in nineteen eighty five. Dan Marino was an anomaly in nineteen eighty five. He'd be the norm today. He'd be the norm. This is what he he would love. He would flourish in today's NFL. And he flourished in the NFL back then, but he got pummeled and hit where these guys say don't get hit. But let's run it back again. Let's talk about this again. So she said all this coverage. The WNBA has not been covered because it's not a, a, a good product. And that's obviously all you're talking about because the best tennis player in the world for 20 years is a black woman. The best American sprinters for the last 40 years of my life have all been black women. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I don't even know what other sports we can look at now because there's only one other sport. It's the WNBA. There's no women's football league. There's no women's baseball league. And the WNBA didn't start until 1997. So most of the sports involving black women are individual sports. And Serena Williams has been marketed beyond anyone. There are people that believe that Serena Williams is the greatest athlete of all time. Forget about greatest woman athlete. The greatest athlete of all time. I don't agree with it. She's definitely amongst the top of all time, for sure. But she's not. I don't think she's number one. But there are people that do believe she's the greatest athlete of all time. But what, I mean, this thought that process that 
You have to be an activist and, and, and pander. You're pandering. In fact, what to me, what Paige Beckers did is insulting to black women. It, it doesn't it doesn't uplift, it makes them look silly. It doesn't it doesn't do anything for them in a positive note? It makes them look like they can't fight for themselves. They can't speak for themselves. We need to have Whitey come and speak on our behalf. Because if Whitey doesn't come speak for us, well then we'll we'll never matter. Bull crap. I know more black attorneys today. There are more black attorneys in my area today than there were 20 years ago. And it's not even close. I'm looking at it from another perspective, not just fuck, not just freaking basketball, but professions. I know black plastic surgeons, black lawyers, and I know a lot of black millionaires who don't play pro sports. Women and men. Women and men. So let's stop with this. You got to call it privilege. I mean, it isn't, it's insulting. And of course the shot is towards Caitlin Clark. It is an attack on Caitlin Clark because she's attacked her for the same crap this year. Asia Wilson has. And I get it. Paige Beckers. I think her stepmom is, I think her stepmother is black. Great. You have a different perspective than other white basketball players. And that's fabulous for you. But you sitting here and you're, so there was no white basketball player that influenced you whatsoever. There was no white person that came in your life and influenced you in basketball at all. Nobody. Nobody. I don't even know if, did she think, did she even thank her father? I, I don't even know if she, I heard her say that. Maybe she, I, I presume she did. She said parents. I, I presume she said parents. But it, it, she was more interested in naming individuals than talking about the people in her inner circle who helped her get through this injury? Did, did Maya Moore help you recover from your, I think it was an ACL, your surgery? Probably not. But you mentioned her, and good. Maya Moore is one of the greatest players of all time. She went to UConn. And I might be moving around a little bit now, but when I listen to that nonsense, it's nonsense. It doesn't uplift. We have to, maybe to some people, they think it does. Maybe Asia Wilson lives in this dreamland where she thinks that what Paige Becker said actually matters. She recognizes her privilege. What is her privilege? She's a baller. She's a white basketball player in a league dominated by black women. She just happens to be a lesbian, I presume. I, I presume that Becker is, is, is a lesbian. So she fits in with no problem, whereas Caitlin Clark is not. So she fits, she's the white, the white woman who doesn't like girls. She hasn't jumped on a podium to whatever you want her to do because she's spoken now twice about this, but it's not the how you want her to say it. So because she doesn't say it how you want her to say it, it's a problem. Sorry, you can't get what you always want. If you want it said a certain way, that's your problem. You deal with it. Kelsey Plum is a clown because she said nothing and she should have spoken up for herself right then and there. But Asia Wilson, sweetheart, you are a, you live privilege. Your life is privilege. Pro basketball player father, professional mother, pro basketball player brother, six foot four, went to the best schools, went to school for free in college. You've lived privilege, and you walk around here like Papa Dot Clarence from Eight Mile. And I'm not saying Caitlin Clark came from where Eminem came from because she didn't, obviously, and neither did Paige Beckers. They came from middle class families, no question. But stop it. Stop it. You have no idea. Uh, I would take that a lot better from a, an athlete who grew up with nothing. Who grew up in the stereotypical single mother football player. Because that's a lot of football players. A lot of these young foot, these high school football players end up in private schools because these schools let them go for free. They still live in the hood. They still have single moms. 
they, they still go through what they go through. I would take it a whole lot better if that came from someone like that than someone who's lived privilege her whole life. Asia Wilson's a joke. And listening to her, oh my God, I, I, I can't even, I can't even. It's a joke. It's embarrassing. And she deserves to get dragged for it because she's a bully. And she's coming across like a bully. Because obviously you would assume if Kelsey Plum says something back, nothing's going to physically happen there. But you never know. I mean, I'm not going to presume that she's going to fight her, but she's a bully. Because you, I'll be damned if you say some crap like that to me. After I've worked this hard for this for so many years to be at this level, and you're going to sit here and have the audacity to sit here and tell me that I'm in the WNBA because of privilege? Man, stick it up your you-know-what. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Come on now.